can turn the world down with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can have the time, why don't you take it this happens to you a lot. I mean, who would expect a congresswoman to call a number that I would answer? Um, here's Mary. Mrs. Geddes? Yes. Oh, well, that was a friend of mine. Yes, I thought the show went very well. Well, thank you. That's very nice. The next time I get to Washington, I'd be delighted to come to your place for dinner. And listen, the next time you're in Minneapolis, I would love you to come to my place for dinner. Friday? <laughs> uh, sure. Yes, that would be fine. Great. It's uh, 119 North Weatherly. How about 8 o'clock? Good. I'll look forward to it. Bye-bye. Rhoda, Congresswoman Geddes is coming here for dinner Friday. That's tomorrow. Oh, Rhoda, what am I going to serve? Who will I invite? I mean, I, I just have a day to get well, ready. Now, Mary, just a minute. Before you go through all that, why don't the two of you just go out to a nice restaurant? No, I can't take her to a restaurant. But, Mary, you know about your parties. What about my parties? You don't know about your parties? No, what about my parties? Nothing. Rhoda, Not come on. What about them? Mary, I thought you knew. Your parties are uh, disasters. I mean, I thought you knew. How could you not know well, that? Yes, I know. Okay, I know I knew. I just didn't know that anyone else knew. <laughs> Rhoda, why aren't I a wonderful hostess? You know, I should really be a wonderful hostess. I mean, I've got a warm apartment. I set a nice table. I'm a pleasant, friendly sort of person. I should give great parties. All right, all right, Mary, give the party. But just keep it small this time. I mean, just a small, congenial group. Now, how many people do you know that like each other? Six. Six. <laughs> that's how many I can seat at my dining table. Then that's all you should have. Oh, Rhoda, I hope this party turns out all right. I mean, I hope I finally give a good party because, I mean, if I don't, I'm gonna start being afraid to invite people over here, you know? Pretty soon people won't invite me to their place because they'll be afraid I'll invite them back here and they won't want to come. Before you know it, I'm going to end up a little old lady sitting alone in my apartment tickling my cat. <laughs> yes? Um, Mr. Grant? Mm hmm I was wondering if you're not doing anything tomorrow night if you'd like to come to my place for dinner. Sure, I was wondering where I was going to eat. Oh, great. It's just going to be a small dinner party. I can't make it. <laughs> Mr. Gant, when you thought it was just going to be dinner, you could make it. Mary, uh, I'm going to have to be frank with you. Brutally frank. Okay? Yes, of course. You give rotten parties. <laughs> well, Mr. Grant, I no, really... No, it's, it's not that I don't have a good time at your parties, Mary. I've had some of the worst times in my life. <laughs> Agony. My wife and I broke up at one of your parties, you remember? Not that I'm holding your party responsible, you understand, but it sure didn't help. Well, I'm glad that you were able to be so uh, very frank, Mr. Grant. I'll tell you why I don't have a good time at no, your party. No, 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 no need to go into no. any of that. It's I don't like parties where they run out of scotch early and I have to drink a punch made out of white wine and Kool-Aid. No, 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 Mr. Grant, that was not Kool-Aid, that was cassis. 
Well, whatever it was, made my lips red. But it's not going to be that kind of a party. It's going to be just a small dinner party that I'm giving for Congressman Geddes. You remember we did that interview show together? Mm -hmm. And it'll be you, me, Murray, and his wife, and Rhoda. What about Ted? Well, I'm not going to have room for Ted. Okay, one point for you. Uh, it's just so depressing, thinking about going to another one of your... <laughs> but I, you know, I guess you wouldn't ask me if you didn't need me, so I'll be there. Good, I'm glad. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Oh, and Mary, this is your last shot. <laughs> about it. Okay, goodbye. Well, I'm sorry, Mayor. I can make it, but Marie's got to go to Chicago to visit her sister. Oh, well, that's terrific. Great. What? No, no, Marie, I don't mean it's terrific that Marie can't make it. I mean, it's terrific because now I can invite a date. <laughs> so, now, all I have to worry about is what to serve. What to serve. Well, say, why don't you go see Sue Ann Nevins? She'll be a great help. You know, the other day, Marie made something she saw Sue Ann prepare on her Happy Homemaker show. Yeah. In fact, it was the exact same dinner the Nixon served to French President Pompidou when he went to the White House. No kidding. How was it? Great. The best Franks and beans I ever had. <laughs> and after baking in a 340-degree oven for 40 minutes, our strawberry swirl is ready to serve. Let's take a look at our finished product, shall we? <laughs> now then. <laughs> oh, surely that isn't how a strawberry swirl is supposed to look, is it? <laughs> Somebody forgot to plug in the oven. <laughs> goes to show that anybody can make a mistake, even your happy homemaker. <laughs> now, don't you go away. We'll be right back after this commercial message. <laughs> All clear. All right, who the hell is responsible? <laughs> Mary. Hi. I'm waiting for an answer. Five seconds, Sue Ann. Don't go away. Stand by. Cue Sue Ann. Well, it seems as though we've come to the end of another show. It was so nice of you to drop around for our little visit. Remember to come back tomorrow when I'll have some handy hints on how to feel fresh fruit. <laughs> so until tomorrow, this is Sue Ann Nibbins, your happy homemaker, saying, God couldn't be everywhere, so he made mothers. <laughs> Clear, Sue Ann. All right, everyone stay right where he is. We're going to have a little meeting. Sigh, come down here. Mary, dear, aren't you looking lovely? What can oh. I do for you? Well, gee, it's not really important, Sue Ann. I can come back another time. Oh, nonsense. I'll be done chewing out the crew in two shakes of a land. <laughs> Oh, it's Cy Fisher, my producer. I'm sure you know Mary Richards. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and now, Cy, uh, perhaps you could tell me who it was who screwed up my strawberries. <laughs> I don't know, Sue Ann. You don't know? Well, we had better find out, hadn't we, Cy? Yes, Sue Ann. Yes. <laughs> Now, Mary, what is it you want to see me about? Oh, it's really not important. Oh, you Sue come Ann. right over here into my living room and you tell me what it is I can do for you. Well, it's just that I was planning. Sigh, I, I want his name and I want it fast. Is that clear? Yes, Sue Ann. Go on, dear. Well, I'm I'm having a party on Friday. A party? What kind of party? Well, it's going to be a dinner party. Oh, Mary, how sweet of you to ask me. I'd love to. <laughs> oh, well, actually, Sue Mary, Ann. Mary, uh, not only will I come, I will prepare the dinner. I will see to it that your little dinner party will become a feast to remember. But, Sue Ann... <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to rake someone's tail over the coals. <laughs> oh, how'd it go with Sue Ann? Well, I lost a date and gained a chef. Sue Ann is coming to the party. Well, I didn't know you were that fond of Sue Ann. What made you invite her? Well, Sue Ann is a great gourmet cook, and I can certainly use all the help I can get, so let's see. It'll be you, me, Rhoda, Congresswoman Geddes, uh, who is up for re-election in a couple of months. We ought to get a look at the polls, any other background material you can find. Hi, guys. What's up? Nothing. Nothing. 
Any big stories break for tonight? I'm afraid not, Tad. Oh, well, you know what they say, no news is good news. <laughs> well, say, Mayor, what time do you want George Jet me to be at your dinner party tomorrow night? <laughs> know about the party? Well, it's a note on Lou's calendar. Mary's dinner party, party tonight. <laughs> Ted, I don't think Lou will be happy if he knows that you're reading things on his desk when he's not there. Murray, I wouldn't do that. He was there while I read it. <laughs> it's a little trick I've mastered, reading upside down. Now, if you could only learn how to do it right side up. <laughs> Usually, I like a bit more notice for a party, Mary, but I'm sure you've got a good Excuse reason. Excuse me, I'm gonna get those poles you wanted me to find. Oh, uh, well, Murray... Uh, so, what time is the party, Mary? Well, Ted, there's a little problem. Uh, you see, it's a sit-down dinner party, mm -hmm. and I've only got room for six people. Oh, say, okay. Uh, listen, I understand. Oh, good, Ted. I'm really glad you well, did. Of course, say no more. I'll just leave Georgette at home. <laughs> I mean, so she misses her dinner, big deal. It's not as if she's going to go hungry or anything. Besides, I've done enough for her this week anyway. So what time is it? Well, Ted, you see... I don't have room for you, either. Come again? <laughs> Ted, I've got this very small dining table. Well, you've seen the table, you know, and it, it, there's only room for six people. Let me get this straight. Are you saying I'm not invited? I'm sorry, Ted. Well, just let me understand this correctly. No, Ted, you see... Just to get it clear in my own mind. <laughs> if you could just try to understand. <sighs> okay, I understand. <laughs> You only have room for six people, and I'm not invited. I don't need a house to fall in on me. I'm sorry, Ted. So who are the six people, Mary? Well, there's uh, the guest of honor, Congresswoman Geddes. Oh, I can understand you're inviting the guest of honor ahead of me. Who else? Well, and then there's Rhoda. I can understand inviting your best friend over me. Who else? Oh, Mr. Grant. Well, that's all I can understand that. He's your boss. You want to butter him up? And then there's me. Yes, well, it's your apartment. And Sue Ann Niven. Wait She's a minute. cooking the dinner, Ted. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, okay, I understand. Hey. Wait a minute, that's five. Who's the six? Murray. You invited Murray over me? Yeah. Murray? My Murray? I did that, Ted, but I explained to oh, you... Oh, please, you don't owe me any explanations. You know why? Because I'm glad I wasn't invited to your party. Do you think I even want to go to one of your parties? It is to laugh, Mary. <laughs> you know something, Mary? You don't know this. But I've had lots of parties that you were never invited. Oh, yes, that's right. Wonderful parties and you were never invited. Come as you are parties, surprise parties, Hawaiian night parties, where you had to say aloha, you couldn't get in. <laughs> parties would have changed your life, Mary, and you weren't invited. Parties where you would have fallen in love with that Mr. Wright you've been so desperately waiting for. Yes, Mary, he was at one of my parties, too. <laughs> so one man in the world meant just for you, Mary, and you missed him. The man that would have given you a home and marriage and children and comfort in your old age was at one of my parties, Mary, and you weren't invited! Well, did you tell Teddy he wasn't invited? Yeah, I told him. How'd he take it? Not bad. <laughs> Right. So I'll see you tonight at 8, right? Right, 8 o'clock. Okay. Hiya, Ted. No. <laughs> oh, pardon me, Mary. Where are you going? Home, Ted. Oh, home? Going home so early? Well, yeah, I have everything finished and I have to get home. Oh, of course. Tonight's the big party for the Minneapolis Six. <laughs> <laughs> However, did it slip my mind? Ted, uh, please excuse me. What is it, Mary? What is it really? I mean, what is it? Is it because you resent my success? Is that what it is? Oh, Ted, please, I tried to explain to you. I just have room for six people. I'll bring my own dish. <laughs> How's that? So it doesn't match oh, yours. Oh, Ted, won't you try to understand? There'll be other parties. I'll give you $20. <laughs> Ted, I really have to be going. Mary. Mary, please. Before you go, I, I'd like to tell you a little story, okay? Okay. Maybe you'll be able to profit by it. I'll never forget it. I was 15 years old at the time. Sensitive, shy, quiet little lad. Suffering the anguish of growing up. And it was Christmas time and a girl in my class was throwing a Christmas party. 
And everyone was invited, except me, Mary. When I found out about it, I went over to see her and I asked her, why? And she said, because I hate your guts. <laughs> well, that night of the party, I, I spent at home, alone in my room, and I cried. It's probably the worst night in my life, Mayor. Outside it was snowing and the carolers were singing. <laughs> it came upon me. <laughs> I felt then that in all the world I was the loneliest person that ever lived. <laughs> but then it came to me, Mary. Why should I sit there feeling sorry for myself? So I went down to my basement, went, got my junior chemistry set. <laughs> I made the biggest stink bomb you ever saw. <laughs> and I threw it right in the middle of that party. <laughs> How's the dinner coming? Oh, Mary, I have outdone myself. Don't burn. Oh, delicious. Mm -hmm. And mm. Julia Child says four cups of heavy cream. <laughs> well, I am ready to serve the salad. Where is everybody? Well, it's only 7.45. What do you mean, only 7.45? I have timed my veal prince Orloff for 8 o'clock. But, Sue Ann, I didn't tell anyone to get here until 8 o'clock. Well, Mary, dear, I'm sorry, but if we don't eat at 8 o'clock, we might as well take my delicious dinner and flush it right down the toilet. <laughs> you see, they're already here. I'll start serving the salad. Well, no, Sue Ann, I... I... Hi, Mary. Hi. Mary, this is Steve Waldman. Uh, Steve, this is Mary Richards. Hello. Come on. Hello. Hoda, uh, could I talk to you for just a moment? Yes, and I wanted to talk to you, too, Mayor. I'll be uh, with you in a minute, Steve. Rhoda, why is he here? Mary, listen, Steve and I work together at Hempel. Uh -huh. And tonight, after four years with the store, he gets fired. So when he asked me to have dinner, I just couldn't say no. The salad is on the table. <laughs> Hello, Rhoda, dear. Mary, we eat in four minutes. Sue Ann, nobody is here yet. They're not here. Rhoda, do you see these chairs? There are six right. chairs. Do you see them? There is no room for him. Mary, he could sit up there at the little table. Rhoda, please. Rhoda, <laughs> listen, I want this party to be a good party. Know you know, I do. want that so badly. And there is not enough food for him. Sue Ann made it very clear to me. There are exactly six portions of Field Prince Orloff. No more, no less. He can have half of mine. Three minutes, Mary. I know, Sue Ann, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A little tense. Hi, I'm Steve Waldman. Lou Grant. Murray Slaughter. How are you? Well, fine, fine. I, I just got fired. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Hi, Murray. Come on Hi, in, Mary. Mr. Grant. Hi, Mary. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, yeah, sure. No drinks, Mary. We eat in two minutes. Miss Richards, I want to thank you for inviting me to dinner. Rhoda, set a place for him at the little table. <laughs> thank you. One minute, Mary. <laughs> so, yeah, Congresswoman Getty isn't here yet. Oh, Mary, dear, uh, do you have any idea what happens if you let veal Prince Orloff sit in an oven too long? No, what? He dies. <laughs> Hello, I'm Margaret Geddes. Steve Waldman. Oh, how do you do? Well, I was just fired. <laughs> I'm sorry. Congresswoman oh, Geddes, uh, it's so nice to so see you again. Good. Everybody, this is Representative oh, Margaret. Margaret. Margaret Geddes. Oh, Rhoda Morgan oh, Stern. Oh, oh, Lou Grant. Oh, oh, Lou how are you? Marie Slaughter. Oh, and and nice Sue Ann Nibbins. How do you do? Yeah. Mary, your dinner is served. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we all take our places then? What happened to my drink? Oh, Mary, so sorry to rush us all like this, but she mistimed her dinner. <laughs> Mary, dear, would you like to bring out the veal, Prince Orloff? Sure. You and we'll start on your lovely salad. Mary made it all herself. Oh, my, it looks delicious. Thank you. <laughs> and this is Mary's Veal Prince Orloff. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. That's look beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Can that you smells see great. that? Oh, really, it's fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, 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 be
seem upset. Mr. Grant, you took three servings of the veal. Yeah. Mr. Grant, there are six people. You took half. You mean that's all there is what's on this platter? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you've got to put some back. <laughs> I just don't do to have a number, everybody. Three people aren't going to get any dinner. All right, I'll put it back. <laughs> Say, you know what? I'm not as hungry as I thought I was. Magnificent conversation, delicious food. Is everybody ready for dessert? And tonight, I saved room for it. Good. What are we having, Mary? Uh, do I smell baked pears, Alicia? Right, baked pears, Alicia. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. It's my favorite dessert in the whole world. Now, listen, why don't we all have dessert and coffee in the living area? <laughs> Mary, the party's going great. I know. I can't believe it. Just great. It's the best party you ever gave. I mean, it's 9 o'clock and everybody's still here. <laughs> we'll have our coffee and delicious in just a minute. I can't wait. Good. <laughs> Ted, what a pleasant surprise. Well, I was having a few drinks alone. Waterfront bar. <laughs> Dangerous looking characters around. I said to myself, maybe Mary didn't have time to think about dessert. So, well, here it is. Sherbert for six. <laughs> Ted, that was very thoughtful of you. Um, would you like to come in? Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to come in or anything. <laughs> Hi, Lou. <laughs> Murray. Rhoda. <laughs> See? Lou, if you need a lift, I'll be waiting outside. Uh, don't hurry. Ted, are you sure you don't want to come? Oh, no, no, no. Ted, wait, really, don't you want to come in? No, I'm sure, I'm sure. Are you sure? Yeah. You're not going to close the door in my face, are you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> What's wrong with you, anyway? You got a screw loose somewhere? You playing with a full deck up there, fella? I'm not sure I get what you mean, Lou. Well, what I mean is, why are you always doing stuff like showing up in places where you weren't invited with a pint of sherbet? Be fair, Lou. The sherbet's a new touch. I don't know what makes me do this. Maybe it's because I'm remembering a party of a long time ago. Huh? Maybe it's because I'm remembering a 15-year-old boy, shy, sensitive lad, suffering the anguish of growing up. You see, it was Christmas time, and a girl in my class was throwing a Christmas party, and everybody was invited except me. And when I found out about it, I went over there, weren't I? Asked why. And she said, because you're poor. <laughs> and you don't have nice clothes. Ted, did that actually happen? It crossed my heart, Rhoda. <laughs> well, I stayed home the night of the party, alone in my room. And I cried. Outside, it was snowing, and the carolers were singing. It came upon me. 